Okay, so to make chicken enchiladas, you need the chicken. So here I have around a five pound chicken and I'm going to cut it into pieces and boil it. Here I've placed it in a pot of water and I'm going to season it with salt, onion powder, garlic powder. I even ended up adding some fresh garlic, onion, carrot, and celery because I'm going to use the chicken broth in other recipes. Once the chicken is done, I'm going to remove it, let it cool slightly so I can handle it, and then just shred it and remove all the chicken from the bones. And here I have all of my shredded chicken ready for these chicken enchiladas. And now let's move on to the enchilada sauce. Here I have some wajillo chiles. I'm also going to be using some garlic and some salt. And these ingredients will give you a basic enchilada sauce, but of course, you know I have to add my own extra seasonings to things, so I'm also going to be adding some chicken bouillon flavoring. And I, I do have this jar of Knorr chicken flavor bouillon, which is pretty typical in cooking when you're cooking a lot of Mexican food nowadays. I can't say in everyone's household, but at least in mine. But I did have a commenter that mentioned that that mentioned that I should try better than bouillon chicken base. So here it is, I'm going to give it a try. And if you have nor, just use nor, and you're going to season your sauce to taste. I'm probably going to use a full teaspoon of this better than bouillon in my enchilada sauce, and you can leave it out. Just use salt like my grandma used to do. She didn't have all these other ingredients. So back to the chiles. Here I've added some ancho chile and some pasilla chiles to make up for the wajillo chiles that I did not have. So when you're making the sauce, you can straight up use around eight to 10 wajillo chiles, but I didn't have that many, so I had to improvise and use other chiles. No biggie, because it's not gonna stop me from making these enchiladas. So I'm going to boil these chiles, I'm going to bring the water to a boil, shut it off, and let the chiles steep for about 15 to 20 minutes until pliable. And, oh yeah, before I forget, I'm going to add this ginormous clove of garlic you could add two or three. I'm adding this one because it's really huge. So again, bring your water up to a boil, shut it off, and let your chile steep for about 15 to 20 minutes. After about 20 minutes, the chiles should look just like this, soft and pliable. Now they are ready to be blended. So I'm going to pop these in a blender with the clove of garlic. I'm going to add a couple pinches of salt. Remember, the seasoning is to your taste. And if you want to add other things to your sauce, go for it. Make it your own. This is pretty basic. So I reserved some of the boiling liquid that the chiles were soaking in. I reserved about a cup and a half. I'm going to add a half cup to the blender to get things moving along. And now I'm just going to blend it for about a minute or until everything is nice and smooth. Now I'm going to take this over to the stove and cook this in a preheated pan. I'm going to add a little bit of oil, let that heat up, and then I'm going to pour my puree into the pan and cook it out. And I will be adding an, around another two cups of liquid to thin out the, the puree. And I also wanted to point out a mistake that I made. This might help you should you come across this situation. I poured the puree in the pan without sieving it. Normally when I do these chile purees, when I'm cooking, I like to sieve it after the blender to get rid of any skin that did not get pureed well. So here we go into the sieve. And I managed to catch this mistake before things got too hot. So if you come across this situation, no biggie, you can always correct yourself. And guess what? Even if you realize after you've made this whole pan of sauce and you didn't sieve it, just go with it. It's not gonna hurt anybody that it's not sieved. Okay, so I did end up with a lot of skin, so I'm glad I did sieve it. So now I'm just going to pour the sauce back into the pan. I'm going to cook it out. I'm also going to be adding around an extra two cups of liquid. Again, you can use water, you can use chicken stock, chicken broth. The broth that I made earlier for the, from the boiled chicken, I used in another recipe. Okay, so now I'm going to add one teaspoon of the Better Than Bouillon chicken base. 
You can actually leave this step out if you prefer not to add any chicken flavoring. This is just something I like to do to impart more flavor into my enchilada sauce. I'm also going to be adding a half teaspoon of onion powder and a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. Again, those are all options that you can use or not use because it's your sauce when you make it in your kitchen. After giving it a good mix, I'm going to allow it to simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. I would also like to mention that I am simmering this on a fairly low heat. I rarely ever cook on a high heat, so that is something to keep in mind when you're simmering this. Don't cook it on a high heat because it will burn. Now that my sauce is ready, I'm going to go over some of the other things I need for these enchiladas, like the corn tortillas. And what I did was I took some corn tortillas and basically warmed them through in some hot oil. This is going to allow me to dip the tortillas into the sauce without them basically disintegrating in my hand. If you skip this step and you dip it into the sauce later, you're going to find that you won't even be able to roll them. They're just going to fall apart. So don't skip this step. And I also wanted to show you what I will be using as my toppings today. I'm going to be using some cotija cheese. You could also use queso fresco, but I like the sharper, saltier taste of the cotija cheese. But again, use what you have. I'm also going to be using some shredded lettuce. You could also add some thinly sliced fresh onion. You can add fresh avocado, fresh tomato, or even your favorite salsa. The topping is up to you. So here's a quick rundown of what I'll be using. Here I have my sauce, my shredded chicken, my corn tortillas, and my cotija cheese and shredded lettuce. I am ready for these enchiladas, so let's get started. So I'm just going to take my corn tortilla and dip it into the sauce. By the way, when you warm your corn tortillas in the hot grease and when you make your sauce, after you make both of those items, you wanna make sure you allow them time to cool off. You don't want them cold, just allow them to cool enough so that you can work with them without getting third degree burns. So all that's left to do is just roll out my enchiladas. So what I'm going to do is take one of my tortillas. I'm going to fill it with the chicken. You could also fill it with some of the cheese, but chicken is fine for me. You're going to give it a tight roll, place it on the plate, and then you just top it with whatever toppings you like. So here we go. always all the ingredients will be listed in the description box below. I hope you give this recipe a try, I hope you like it, and thanks for watching! Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes, or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching!